for Pat Riley and the New York Knicks. Overall, this has been a very successful season. Except the Knicks now find their backs inexplicably against the wall, as the 2-0 lead they had in this series against the Chicago Bulls is now a 3-2 deficit. And with what could be the deciding game of the series at Chicago Stadium, New York will have plenty to worry about as the confident Bulls have been down this road before and have come out on top. From Chicago Stadium, it's the New York Knicks versus the Chicago Bulls in Game 6 of the Eastern Finals. Starting for the Knicks in the backcourt are Doc Rivers and John Starks. Up front are Charles Oakley and Charles Smith. And in the middle is center Patrick Ewing. For the Bulls, B.J. Armstrong and Michael Jordan are the guards. Horace Grant and Scotty Pippen start at the forward. And veteran Bill Cartwright is the center. NBA Coach of the Year Pat Riley runs the show for the Knicks. And Phil Jackson's his counterpart for the Chicago Bulls. In first quarter action, Doc Rivers finds Ewing on the right block. And Patrick turns and nails the jump hook. Scotty Pippen up high. This is the B.J. Armstrong who scores on the floater. Bulls in transition. And Pippen deals to Grant on the right for the layup and the foul. Jordan gets the ball from Grant up top. Drives in and finds Cartwright for the kiss off the glass and the foul. And in the middle of the first, it's a 13-10 Chicago Bull lead. Doc Rivers dishes off to John Starks, who steps back off the switch and nails the three-pointer. The Bulls on the run, and Pippen holds up for Jordan, passes off, and Michael stops and nails the three. Now Michael fights King on the block, and he spins and scores on the one-handed shot. Greg Anthony gets the ball on the high left, drives the baseline, turns, and scores on the reverse. But at the end of the first, it's 29-21, the Bulls. Anthony with the ball again in the second. And this time, he drives from the right side and again scores on the reverse. Rivers, bounce passes to Starks, and he takes it in for the strong move to the basket. Michael posts up against the smaller Starks. Turns, and banks it off the glass for two. Jordan misses on the jump, and Charles Smith dribbles it up court. Changes hands on the dribble, and scores on the driving layup. And in the middle of the second quarter, it's a 43-37 Chicago Bulls lead. Jordan passes off to Cartwright. He finds Grant down low, who scores on the jump hook. The Knicks can't seem to buy a hoop here, as everyone misses a shot at the basket. Until Ewing snares the rebound, and scores on the layup and draws the foul. Pippen steals the entry pass by Rivers, brings it up, and finds Armstrong in a baseline for the sweet jumper. Charles Smith gets the ball on the right, drives in, dishes to Mason, who pump fakes, then scores on the layup. And going into the locker room in this extremely crucial sixth game, it's the Chicago Bulls leading the New York Knicks by a three-point margin, 49-46. In the first half, the Knicks out-rebounded the Bulls an incredible 25-7 overall and 12-1 on the offensive glass. Both Jordan and the Knicks didn't shoot well, but the rest of the Bulls shot an impressive 63%. Now, let's join Marv Albert and Mike Rotella with eight minutes remaining in the third period and the Bulls leading by four for the call of the game. Armstrong for three. Ewing had it knocked 
knocked away. Last touch by Grant. Patrick Ewing is playing big, way above the rim tonight. He is possessed right now to go get every rebound. And here comes pressure on Rivers. Well, the shot clock down to 10, and now the Knicks are looking for the shot. The pressure at the half court delaying the situation. Sparks misfired. Here comes Pippen. Caught right from Pippen. And a blocking foul called on Starks. Well, you mentioned the key thing back at the other end of the floor for New York. They were just starting to get into their half-court offense with 10 seconds remaining on the 24-second clock. And what they wound up with was about a 25, 26-foot jumper by Starks. Then he hustles back, tries to pick up the offensive foul. But Big Bill, on his way, gets the benefit of the call. A remarkable statistic. The Knicks have out-rebounded the Bulls 28 to nine. And yet here's Chicago with front run at the line in front by five points. And if there are big reasons for it, it's the points off turnovers that Chicago has scored and it's the blown opportunities by New York on fast break chances or little inside shots that normally they would convert that have rolled out that prevent them from taking the lead. Cartwright is five out of five from the line. There you see points off turnovers. That 19-4 advantage. Bulls lead by six. They track Rivers. Starks. And Starks will go to the foul line. That also puts the Bulls over at 11. Scotty Pippen collects his third. By keeping John Starks in the middle of the floor against the press, New York has been able to go over to the side, back to the middle, and wind up with a 3-2 advantage. Oakley on one side, Ewing on the left wing, Starks coming down the middle. So the hope is there that you've got scorers, you've got big people to get on the glass, and in Starks, a guy who, if the shot's not there, at least can distribute the basketball to a teammate. John Starks, a solid free throw shooter, has struggled at the line of the series. Two out of five in game five. 12 for 23 from the foul line coming into tonight. The Bulls 59, the Knicks 55. Five minutes have gone by in the third quarter. Rivers nearly picked it off, Ewing good. Ewing putting the ball on Pippen. And then blocked by Jordan. What a play. Michael Jordan hustled back and rejected Patrick Ewing. But to go back to the beginning of that play, what a terrific effort, sensational by Ewing, who may have hurt his shoulder a little bit. First of all, the seven-footer comes up with it, then has the confidence in his offhand, left hand, to get it down the floor. Jordan, as he gets it, pulls that arm back, and we saw Ewing react as he came to the bench by grabbing that shoulder. Timeout has been called, 6.49 to go in the third. We have 6.49 remaining in this third quarter. Bulls with a 59-55 lead. And Ahmad just mentioned there's a big, major concern in the Chicago huddle about the fact that they keep giving those leads away and let New York back in the game. They can't sustain the spurt, the energy to open this thing up. When he's set up, but Ewing is fouled. Scotty Pippen picks up his fourth. Pippen came over to help. Number four on Pippen, so Ewing to the line. They had run their pick and roll, step Ewing back for the jumper. No one got there in time on the rotation to pick him up. He saw a clear path to the basket, took it in. Little indecision as to who was coming. Was it Pippen to go, or was it Cartwright who was going to make the rotation? The Knicks are now 12 of 15 from the line. The Knicks have never lost four in a row under Pat Riley. They won the first two this series. They've lost three straight. Just Kersey blowing the whistle. It's a lane violation. 
and Ewing will get another opportunity. The ball must be released before you step in. Cartwright's already in the lane. Violation. But it's the hat trick. Ewing missed all three. The Knicks have been shooting well at the foul line. Up until the third quarter. Shot clock at three. At two. At one. Jordan. Rebounded by Oakland. Michael Jordan now eight for 18. He is 21. 17 of the half. Another deflection leading to the steal and the break. Armstrong stopped by Oakland. And a foul is called. No, they say clean block. It is a clean block. Bill Jackson puzzled by the call. Well, excellent hustle this time by Oakley. Getting back. It looks like a sure layup, but Oakley gets back. Piece of the underside of his arm actually blocks the wall. BJ thinks he got fouled. Oakley thinks it's a clean block, and the officials this time side with Charles Oakley. BJ can't believe it. The officials conferring determining how much time is left on the shot clock and whether or not to allow Scott Williams to check in and here he comes replacing Scotty Pippen 10 points for Pippen along with 6 assists departing after picking up his 4th foul just a moment ago Rivers trying to draw the foul Jacob Nelson are you okay? this play just continued Doc looked up, wanted the offensive foul ball, and he said, Jake looked at him and asked him if he was okay, Doc. He also said, Doc, you must be kidding. Ewing for Smith on a triple team. He challenged and was turned back. Jordan, with the change of direction, gives it back out. A little deja vu of the last game, Charles Smith going up in a crowd under the basket. Shot clock at five, and now a foul is called. Don Rivers, pushing foul. That is his third. Smith, strong inside, gets the nice feed pass by Patrick Ewing. A little pump fake, and then takes it right to the front room, trying to draw contact. No call, no basket. Next with a third team foul. Bulls already over the limit. Smith over to help. Again, the Bulls find the open man. Williams missed the reverse. And Ewing gets to it. And New York has made an adjustment defensively. When Michael catches it in the post there, they're not waiting any longer. Someone's coming at him right away now, trying to get the ball out of his hands. And that is a huge adjustment of the New York defensive scheme. Ewing fires from deep. And the Knicks are looking to... Straight up, no question. But uh, they are coming with a second man in certain situations. Bulls have missed the last four shots. And having difficulty locating shots. Pretty fast. Grant, head the head of these foul. A gorgeous pass from Jordan. Let's go to the last time down the floor. Michael Jordan on the post up being played straight up by Rivers. Here's the next defensive man that's going to come over and form the double team. Something that New York doesn't like to do. But they get it out of his hands, which is what they want. Get it over to the other side of the floor. Make someone else have to beat you. The interior passing of Michael Jordan. Sensational to Grant, who converts and now gets the opportunity to make it a three-point play. Ewing called for the foul. It is a three-point play. Maharis Grant. Michael Jordan picked up his seventh assist with that setup. Greg Anthony and Anthony Mason have checked in. The Knicks are down by five. Four minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Third quarter. Anthony doing it off the dribble to set up Mason. Anthony Mason with his second field goal. He has seven points, along with seven rebounds. 
The Bulls lead by three. Now Starks is matched with Jordan. With Rivers sitting down. Oakley over to help. Armstrong. Cartwright keeps it alive. A rare offensive rebound for Chicago. And Ewing had it knocked away. Last touch by the Bulls. who has guided the Knicks to their best regular season in 25 years directing traffic but as the Knicks move up court we get a timeout convert at the end watch after the play making sure that no continuations call a little shot there by Pippen to Mason because he didn't like the extra little foul after the whistle that Mason put on him. Chicago with its first miss they hit 15 straight well that was the first testy moment we've seen here tonight with Mason going at Pippen you know there are some people who feel that the Knicks have lost their fierceness could it be all the posturing in the media, the complaints by, by Phil Jackson may have taken an effect as the officiating team. They are not the same part of the age that we saw most of the season. I'm sure that the talking that has gone on and the warnings that have come down, the flagrant foul, the ejection from the angle, but more the concern, nobody wants to get thrown out of this critical stage. The next thing is, keep in mind the fatigue factor of the seven game series it's incredible players do wear down. And Pippen trying to convert off the steal, and a foul was called. Starks picks up his third. 
during the course of the regular season on the left you see the average minutes played but then come playoff time when you have to step up and the demands are greater it becomes more physical and when you're playing against a championship team sometimes it takes its toll and you're not the same players at the same team that you were now michael jordan replaced by Daryl walker who has not played at all this evening seen only limited action during the series, but when Darrell Walker is on the floor, he is usually in someone's face. And now very tight in the The matchup is Walker against the Starks. Illegal defense called again against the Bulls. That's their third violation. Scotty Pippen is complaining that you're allowed to cross under the foul line if you are anticipating a pass to the post so that you can get on your way to a rotation. If, if players ball fake, and you see Pippen at the foul line start to go down below it, come back on this ball fake there. He crosses below, but then tries to come back. That's where he gets called for the illegal defense, and he says, in his opinion, it should be okay because there was a ball fake from the rim. He was just anticipating it. Knicks had missed their previous four at the line. They're now 13 for 19. Here is Rolando Blackman for John Starks. One of the best at that, at exploiting the defense and exposing him, was Larry Bird when he played. He'd get deep behind the three-point line. Ball fake, ball fake, ball fake. Drive the defense is crazy. And then you had to play him out there because of his ability to shoot. Ball's looking for the uh, violation. Greg Anthony not able to hit. Williams with the block and then Anthony called for the foul. That is number four on Anthony. How many times do you think you've got a sure score? This is in for Oakley, right? No, it's not. Erased by Scotty Williams. And Anthony gets a little bit too aggressive in trying to jam the outlet pass. Scotty's happy with himself. He makes a big defensive play. Both teams over the limit with a minute three to go in this third quarter. Caught right. Five for five from the line. The ball is 70. And the next 64. I was talking with Scott Williams down in the locker room earlier uh, before the game, and he was talking about, you know, if I get a few more shots, I'll score a few more points. And I just mentioned to him, Scotty, you got a job to do. That's his job. Rebound the basketball, play good defense, block some shots, set good screens. Don't worry about being a big scorer. Well, isn't that the end result of a player perhaps playing for his contract? He will be a free agent. You have to be concerned about that. Those are some of the subtle things that take place on teams during the course of years where guys get out of sync, get out of what they do best for their team by going for themselves. Excellent pressure by Chicago. Only seven on the shot clock. Mason, yes. Anthony Mason with a tough angle jump to bring the Knicks within five. Another converted score for New York with the shot clock down, as you said, under seven seconds, and yet they make another big one. Ball 71, Knicks 66. Pippen rebounded by Oakland. The Knicks continue to dominate the boards. 25 seconds to go in the third. Knicks have out rebounded the balls. 33, 14. Mason with the opening. Yes, he's hit two straight. And the Knicks are with him three with 16 seconds left in the third. And I would imagine it'll go to Scotty Pippen to try and create for either Tucker in one corner, Paxson in the other or Pippen to beat Mason off the dribble. Mason's been giving him room. That's why Pippen's gone to the jump shot. Right now he's up tight on him. Final seconds of the quarter. The fake by Pippen. Rebound Ewing as time runs out in the third. The Bulls at one stretch led by as many as ten. The Bulls now lead by three as we head to the fourth quarter. Scotty Pippen now with 17. Michael Jordan has 21.
left in the fourth quarter. And a blocking foul called on Paxson. Bill Jackson, faced with a decision here, do you leave John Paxson on the floor because he made a big three-pointer? And he's doing a pretty solid job. You bring BJ back, who's made so many big shots for him, and can apply a little more pressure defensively. Right now, he's going with Paxson because he likes the fact he gets him into their offense from different areas other than BJ. Mason rejected. Mason stopped again, and he's fouled, and Jordan upset with the call. Pat Riley has made the substitution with Doc Rivers coming on for Greg Anthony. Jordan called for his fourth. There's the first piece by Michael. Then from behind the slight, a little bit too much wrist or hand on the floor. And the game is being held up momentarily while a fan threw a bottle out on the floor, soda bottle, there's soda all over the floor, a ridiculous situation well, to have a, an athlete potentially injured by something like that, they're out trying to clean it up. It appeared that there were people pointing in the direction of the person who, who threw the, the bottle out, unbelievable. And he will be escorted out of Chicago Stadium. Meanwhile, we get the official timeout. were nine for ten from the line in the first half they are four of ten in the second half and again Pat Riley is suffering as he watches his team die at the foul line that killed them in, in game five in New York how about George Carl one of the more colorful coaches in the NBA he made the statement recently that his goal is to coach Sunday in the CBA. He had a stint, you recall, in the CBA. In fact, after Sonic games this season, in the middle of the night, he would dial the CBA hotlines to check on scores. George Carl. Stay on top of basketball all over. Absolutely. And obviously enjoyed his time in the Colorado Basketball Association. He's done a, a great job with the Seattle Supersonics. Goals by four. Hanson. Rebounded by Grant. Paxson for three. Kept alive by King and he threw the foul. Stacy King will go to the line for the first time. That is number five committed by John Starks. And that man right there, Pat Riley, has done some job with this basketball team. In only two years, would you say that perhaps they're slightly ahead of schedule? Yes, I, I think there was a point this season where Dave Jackson and Ernie Grunfeld and Pat Riley said, hey, we could have a shot at contending for the title. I, I don't know if they felt it would happen this quickly. Right here, they are facing either a Game 7 in New York or elimination at the end of the season. A season that saw the Knicks win 60 games, finishing on top of the Eastern Conference. They opened up this series after knocking off Charlotte and Indiana by winning the first two. Smith was fouled. And Chicago turned it with three straight wins, including that breakthrough victory in New York on Wednesday. Paxson called for the foul. Yeah, we said the, I'm sorry, you have two outstanding coaches that kind of approach things from a different way, but accomplish the same thing in the end. They've got teams that capture the attention of the league. They play a little different style of basketball, each of them. 
but both feared by the opponents for what they do respectively where you know that when you show up against these two people you better be ready to play and stacy king hears it from the crowd eight points for stacy bill cartwright is back on the subject of coaches Mentioned the nice words about George Carl, knowing George's personality. We'll say, oh, we're just trying to cozy up to him because he's been complaining that Seattle doesn't get enough attention. You know that that would be George's point of view. Well, if they win this next game, they'll capture a little bit of attention from around the country. The ball 79 of the Knicks, 75. Yes, the Suns and the Suns, game seven tomorrow in Phoenix. And NBC will have it starting 3 o'clock with Showtime. 3 o'clock Eastern. Just under seven minutes. Manning of the fourth quarter. Shot clock at five. Here's Pippen. Well, he thought it was deflected, but it was not, according to the officials. And it will be. Nick Paul will be come back following the timeout with 6.49 left of the game. with the 24 second clock all the way down Paxson knows that he's got to hurry and get it up to his right with one second remaining the ball is in the air one second on the 24 second clock John Paxson makes it underneath Grant shoves Ewing in the back sure he comes up with the ball but can't do it that way The Knicks 78. Ewing is 2 of 4 at the line. The Knicks continue to struggle at the free throw line. We'll see how many passes Chicago throws. I think they called their four pass offense. There's two, there's three, there's four. That's what they called out. They wanted four passes before anybody took a shot. Scotty Pippen had a good, clean look at the basket and hit that corner jump. Coaches will go to that when they feel that the ball isn't moving, when they stack that offense. They want some touches in there, get everybody involved. Jackson made the ball for his offense. Chicago leads by five. Charles Yes. 14 points for Smith. The Bulls by three. The Knicks seeking to prolong the season. Looking for a game seven in New York on Sunday night. The Bulls want to wrap it and get a couple of extra days of rest as they wait for the winner between Phoenix and Seattle. Grant, way short. The Chicago shooting has been off here in the fourth quarter. This is one of the things that New York makes on that fatigue will set in against their opponent. New York Field is the best conditioned team in the NBA. The big bodies are going to wear you down, force you to miss shots in the end. Nice fake, but Ewing went short. He thought he was fouled. And Rob 
Everybody wants his club to get back. They do not. Pippen. Well, now the Knicks able to get back into position. They escape. Yes, they escape a dangerous situation right there. And Phil Jackson wants to talk it over. 349 ready. In the game. Holes by three. Asking what fiend would steal Air Jordans? Oh goody! More Air Jordans for me! Pebble Beach! This is no way for a pamper superstar to travel! What the shoes? And they're all mine! Give me the Jordans! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! No! Take these or else! Saved by a clever edit! A giant pencil with an equally giant eraser. I smell trouble. I smell popcorn. Is that better popcorn? Eat it while it's hot. Eat it while it's better. Our heroes have made the world safe for truth, justice. And Mike's royalty tips from Nike. That's all, folks. That's my client's line. It says so in my deal. Jeez, what a pig. Well, it's certainly something that Pat Riley mentioned at halftime during the regular season. New York was number one in the league, holding their opponents to just 43% shooting from the floor. At halftime of this game, Chicago was at 55%. They've done their job, New York, in the second half, reducing that field goal percentage. They've also cut down on turnovers. Here's Pippen. Scotty Pippen thought he was fouled. Another big shot by Pippen, who has certainly made a habit out of it. In this series, he has 21 points in all. The Bulls by five. Ewing's pass nearly picked off. It was saved by Pippen, taken by Smith. And a palming violation seems to be indicated. Let's see, Jake O'Donnell with the call. And now in a conversation over at the scorer's table. Pippen started the double team, got the hand out, then dove to save the basketball on the floor. Now we're just trying to get a read on what Jake O'Donnell's call would be. He was motioning that there was a turnover or carry of the basketball. Apparently he said Pippen was at the counter. And the ball is being awarded to the Knicks with a new 24 and three... 16 remaining in this fourth quarter as a timeout is called. Here's another look at it. See. The interpretation has to be whether or not he has possession of the basketball. If he had possession, then New York should be awarded a new 24. The interpretation was this was not a slap or a bat by Pippen, that it was a controlled save, and because of that, a new 24 seconds will be awarded to the New York Knicks rather than just playing out the time that's left on the 24-second clock. So it's not a, a palm as we thought it no, seemed the, to be the, the motion. Indication. The motion that Jake O'Donnell was making, turning his hand over, meant that he felt he had controlled it long enough in saving it, and it wasn't a slap. Now 15 out of the 24. We come up on three minutes remaining of the game. The Bulls lead by five. They double up on Starks. Ewing. If they convert, this game is a different story right now. They are on their feet here in Chicago. Jordan, he thought he was hacked. Grant able to get to it. Michael Jordan only 8 for 24. He's missed his last seven shots. Let's give Rivers some credit for pretty good defense. Shot clock at 8. Shot clock at 5. shot the basketball he felt he was hit on the forearm that's why his shot pulled up short he turned complained this time rivers hit with the hand check four on rivers and a 
timeout taken. That's a 20 second timeout. So the Bulls are down to two timeouts left. Two conventional. And the Knicks have their three full timeouts remaining. Pippen had to go to the 20. He had no inbound pass. Rather than lose a possession, he calls it. And Chicago has come back off the boards after being severely beaten in the first half. 25-7 disparity. Horace Grant with nine rebounds in the second half. Nine of his 11. And that has been the major difference. Yeah, and an offensive rebound, which was 12-1 in favor of New York at halftime. Right now in the second half, it is six offensive rebounds for Chicago, just two for New York Knicks. The ball's 85, the Knicks 80. Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining, fourth quarter. Perhaps remaining in the New York Knicks season. Pippen, rebound Ewing. Oh, uh, Ewing is up. Ewing is after every one of those rebounds, understanding the importance of taking possession, trying to cut down Chicago's offensive boards. 12 rebounds for Ewing, along with 18 points. Starks for three. Starks scoops it. John Stark stepped on the line. Hustling after the loose. There's the right foot on the line while he's got possession. Good call. No question about it. Our rivers are joined in each other's faces. And it, 35 to go. Jordan fouled by Rivers. And now Jordan with some words for Rivers. And Jordan being ushered aside. Oh, Doug Rivers just went back at Michael Jordan. And they're being separated. Talk about competitive people. Doc Rivers, every bit as competitive as you want on the floor. He's got an assignment. Do you read this one? No. Michael Jordan's teammates trying to settle him down now. That's five on Doc Rivers. Jordan is five for five from the line. This has not been one of the stronger performances for Michael Jordan. It's the other people that have done it tonight. And Pat Riley has, has signaled he wants a timeout after this possession to get everything set up. Making sure there are no mistakes here after this free throw. The Bulls by seven. A minute 34 remaining in the game. And the Knicks take a timeout. Time appears to be running out on the New York Knicks. Knicks and Bulls each have two timeouts left. It will be New York ball. The Bulls lead 87-80. Three-point shooters for New York, Doc Rivers. John Starks are two primary guys. But when you are down by seven, you'll take any score you can get if it's a quick one in a hurry. Knicks are only one of nine from three-point range. Starks one for six. Knicks having difficulty finding a shot. Ewing able to shake off Pippen and hit it. Looked like Pippen took a... Uh, Took a bump in the chin. The Bulls 87, the Knicks 82. Important possessions now as we close in on one minute remaining. Jordan had it knocked away. Paxson for quad right. Shot clock at four. Here's Pippen for three. Yes! Again, Scotty Pippen has hit the big shot.
take the series in six when it is all digested and the media looks back from the New York point of view, uh, back in New York, the complaint about the Knicks will be that they did not go at Pippen in the same physical fashion as they did a year ago. There will be the feeling that they let him off the hook. I, I'm not so sure I would agree with that. I think diff different situations are hard to compare to one another. He's having an excellent series. They've had some big bodies on him, bumping in and hitting him. He's made some shots where certain nights they'll roll in, other nights they'll roll out. And he's getting the roll in this series, shooting 51% from the floor, 22 points, 7 rebounds a game, and almost 4 assists. As well as taking it strong to the hoop, tip by Ewing. Six point balls lead, so the Knicks get the quick bucket. It's time remaining. Michael Jordan through the foul. Hit on a reach in. Michael a seven for seven from the line. Foul committed by Blackman. The Bulls 25 for 26 from the foul line tonight. Here's Scott Williams replacing Bill Cartwright, who hears the cheers. Nine points for Cartwright. And again, did a good job defensively against Ewing. Ewing with... 22 points, but in the first half was not allowed to get to the good position. Seven point Bulls lead. Ewing, yes, 91 86. And the Knicks apply some pressure, 39 seconds remaining. Short being played by Starks and fires it down to Pippen. Pat Riley told his team, come on, you gotta go after him and get him. The clock is running down. Knicks can't find the Bulls to give the foul. And Grant on the drive. He's fouled. It counts. Rolando Blackman with the foul. The Knicks could not chase the Bulls down. They could not get to them to commit the foul. What happened was when the first double team took place, they got the ball out of their hands quickly enough before the foul could happen. Then Chicago kept the floor spread so well that they never could catch up to the basketball. Grant knows the clock's running down. He has to get a shot up somehow or he's going to lose the possession. And as seemed to have been the case this entire series, after those first two games were out of the way, Chicago's gotten every one of those bounce or breaks that they've needed. Chicago leads by eight. Ewing, yes. Uh, Patrick Ewing hits again. It's a six-point lead, but time is running out on the Knicks. Paxson backing it up, and now the foul is called. Or timeout. Let's see. No, Perfect Paxson called for time with five and six tenth seconds remaining. The Bulls 94 and the Knicks 88. Look at that stat. Last 15 years, 106 teams have been down 0-2. Three have come back to win the series, make it four. The Chicago Bulls, as Scott Williams, concludes matters for a 96-88 victory. And it is Chicago going on to the NBA Finals. Chicago will attempt to three-peat, trying to become only the third team in NBA history to pull off three in a row. While for the New York Knicks, the season has concluded, and now the Bulls wait for the winner between Phoenix and Seattle. That's the final. The Bulls defeat the Knicks to win the series in six. Now for the NBA Post Game Show. With the win, the Chicago Bulls will make their third consecutive trip to the NBA Finals. They await the winner of Game 7 of the Sun Sonic Series, which is all tied at three games apiece. Game 6 of the Western Finals saw the Sonics at home in Seattle, where they were looking to avoid elimination by the Suns.
and at first quarter action, the Sonics show superb teamwork as Derek McKee passes to Sean Kemp, who finds Gary Payton wide open for the hoop. Sir Charles fakes the three and dishes off to KJ, who misses on the jumper. But big Mark West is there for the rebound and the jam. Peyton now pushes it up for the Sonics. And misses off the glass. But McKee's there for the putback stuff as the Sonics let it halftime. In the third, McKee spins baseline on Marley and finishes with a lefty jam as Seattle pulled away. In the fourth, Sam Perkins would hit on his fourth three-pointer of the day as the Sonics roll to a 118-102 win over the Suns to force a seventh and deciding game. NBA Game of the Week was co-sponsored by Nike.